in your presence and open your words we pray that you'd speak to each of our hearts Lord your word your word is eternal and living and powerful Lord guide us by your word today speak to each of our hearts in Jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. We're continuing in our Advent series today in Luke chapter 2. And I, or sorry, Luke chapter 1. I'd encourage you to open your Bibles, whether paper or electronic, and follow along with me. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 right through 55. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her, own, in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her six months. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me fulfilled. Then the angel left her. And at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt within her her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed the Lord, that he would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors.
think she had any idea what she was in for as most mothers probably it was a surprise and also there's that fill you know they're filled with wonder and a little bit scary especially the first baby Mary did you know Gabriel came and said you will call his name Jesus and he will be great. He will be the Son of the Most High, equal to the Father before he came into the world, from eternity the Son of God, the long-awaited Messiah, fulfilling the promises of God over centuries. And he was going to set up an eternal kingdom. Imagine Mary, who is going to give birth to a king. Mary, can you really imagine that your son is going to heal the leper and the paralytic and the withered hand and multitudes along the Sea of Galilee, everyone coming with every sickness and ailment? Mary, could you really imagine that your son will say, Lazarus, come forth. And he would rise from the dead. Did you really imagine that your son would cast out demons? And the demons would cry out and ask, You, the Son of the Most High, what do you want with us? What are you going to do with us? And the man who's delivered, he says to him, Go and tell what God has done for you. Hallelujah. Mary, could you even imagine... As you think about what am I going to feed this baby, can you imagine that your son is going to feed the thousands? He'll take bread and break it and serve anyone and everyone. Can you imagine that he's going to walk on water in the midst of a storm? And then he's going to call to the storm the waves and the wind and say, peace, peace. Peace be still, and the winds and the waves will obey his command. That little baby that the angel has told you about, that's what he's going to do. He's going to walk into the temple and say, this is my father's house. And my father's house should be a house of prayer. He'd go sit by the well and tell a woman her past, all that she's ever done. And he would forgive sin, and then he would get people so excited in a really bad way, because they would scold and say, only God can forgive sin. And he'd say, your sins are forgiven, because he was God. He is God, the Son of the Most High God. His name not only will be great, but he will be great. Is he great in your life today? Amen. He'd forgive sin. He would teach. And as he would teach, it was a new teaching, and people flocked to hear him, but then they would stand back and criticize and wonder and talk about what he said. Because he would say, you have heard it said. You have been taught, but I say to you, love God, love others, even love your enemies.
the angel Gabriel came and visited Mary, and he's the same Gabriel that had visited Zechariah. And we remember from last week that Zechariah had questions which cost him a lot. Back in verse 11 of chapter 1, Zechariah says, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife is an old lady. I mean, I'm an old man, and my wife is well along in years. How can this be? How can I be sure of this? I want an assurance. Before I'm obedient, I want to know how can I be sure. And Gabriel answers, I am Gabriel and I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you the good news. Gabriel, I am Gabriel, God's servant. Wow. I am Gabriel and I come from the presence of God and God has sent me to you to speak something very special. Gabriel, God's servant, an angel, the servant of the Lord. He came with authority. He came to speak that message to Mary, but he spoke for God himself. He had no authority on his own, but he spoke for God, and he brought this amazing message. And Gabriel at that time was breaking 400 years of silence. Daniel's prophecies and the other prophecies were now about to be accomplished. They were about to be fulfilled, and Gabriel was here announcing and suddenly there's activity all around. There's so much activity of the angels because of the birth of Christ. They announced his coming. They rejoiced as his appearing. And they rejoice every time a man, a woman, or a child bows their knee and comes to faith in Jesus Christ. We have an idea of angels, and they all speak in King James English. We know that, don't we? Oh, they have a really holy language, but you know what? When someone comes to faith in Jesus, someone says, Jesus, forgive me my sin and be Lord of my life. There is a party in heaven, the scripture says. Hallelujah. And there ought to be a party here on earth every time someone comes, every time someone expresses their faith in Jesus Christ. Next month, we'll be having baptism. And I hope our baptism service is a big party. Get ready. Because each one who comes expresses their faith in Jesus Christ. That I will follow him and I renounce the devil. And I follow Jesus only. The angels rejoiced when they came to faith. And we need to rejoice every time we hear that confession of someone's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They come as servants of God, these angels. They're pleased to minister, not their own ideas, not their own thoughts, not their own wishes. But he said, I stand in the presence of God, and I come with what God has told me to come with. Zechariah, knowing the wonderful births of Isaac and Samson and Samuel, he shouldn't even have asked the question. He should have said, wow, even me, amen. Lord, but then he asked that question, how can I be sure? I really want to know. And how many times we also are doubters where we know something from God, God has spoken to us, God has given us instruction, and yet we say, how can we be sure? How can I know? How can I really know if this is God? And we doubt. Be careful how you doubt, because you might be paying for your doubt for the next nine months. Zechariah was struck, and he could not speak for nine months. Be careful the questions you ask. God is not going to be surprised, and God is ready to answer, but what we need to do is approach in faith. When we hear from God, we need to be obedient. Now we jump forward to verse 34. Mary, Mary asked the question, how will this be since I am a virgin? She asked a different question, not how can I be sure, but Lord, or actually to the angel, she's saying, give me the details. How is this going to work out? 
You know I'm a virgin. You know I'm betrothed. You know I'm about to marry. So, how does this work? She had the wow when the angel said, this is what's going to happen to you. This is how God is going to use you. And then she asks the how, and not in a question of of doubt, but how, Lord, are you going to do it? How is it going to be accomplished? That's the question to ask. And then Gabriel explains in the next couple of verses, 35 through 37, and he even talks about, uh, about Elizabeth's miracle pregnancy. And then he finishes up, for no word from God will ever fail. And one of the other translations says that nothing is impossible with God. Amen? Nothing. Say it. What's impossible with God? Nothing. Nothing. That's what you need to receive. When you hear from God what He wants you to do, just say, okay, what do I need to do next? How is it going to be accomplished? Our faith, your faith and my faith... At its best, it's weak, but we need to nourish it. Our knowledge is clouded, it's limited. We need to wait on God to get clarity. We need to remember and declare that with God, nothing is impossible. We can't see our way through. We don't know where we're headed, but with God, nothing is impossible. What he's called you to do, he'll give you the grace and the strength to do it. There's no work too hard for you as a believer. There's no trial that's too difficult for you to get through. You can do it as God calls you. There's no mountain too high, no valley too deep. I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro some years ago. And oh, it was a struggle at that altitude. And we went slowly. Oh, there's no striding. When I walk here in Addis, I can stride, I can move. But going up Kilimanjaro, it was slow. And then the guys were trying to encourage me in Swahili. Pamoja, tutashinda. Together, we are overcomers. And then I got an idea, yeah, pamoja, tutashinda. But add one word in there, pamoja na Yesu. Together with Jesus, pamoja na Yesu, tutashinda. And we climbed that mountain. We made it. And I encouraged the others, yes. And in our journey of life, yeah, there are many mountains. There are those valleys, and we wonder if we're ever coming out of those dark, deep, valleys. But together, together with God, in faith, we do it. Mary says, how will it be? Not how can I be sure, but show me the way. There's no night too long that God won't give you grace to get through. And so we see Mary's response in verse 38. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. I am the Lord's servant. Just as Gabriel was God's servant, also Mary was God's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. I want to be obedient to it. She knew it was a high honor and privilege that she didn't deserve, and she met it with humility that I am just here to be used by God. I'm ready to obey. I'm ready to be led. I'm ready for whatever lies before me. And as we just enjoyed that song, Mary, did you know? She had no idea. When she said, I am the Lord's servant, be it unto me, even as you said, she didn't know. There were going to be thrills. It was going to be like a roller coaster ride. It was going to go fast at times and slow at times. Drops and climbing. But she said, I am Mary, God's servant. In faith, she offered herself as God's servant. And Gabriel boosts her faith and tells her about Elizabeth. You know, your relative here is also going to have a baby, a miracle baby. Go and talk with Elizabeth and wave at Zachariah because he can't talk back to you. On hearing Mary's greeting, the miracle baby in in Elizabeth's womb, it leaps. She's filled with the Holy Spirit, and she begins to prophesy. And I love this because you know what is happening here? Here are two believers who are coming together, and God does something special when believers get together. 
We say so many times where two or three are gathered, and we say it kind of in a quaint way, and usually we say it because only two turned up at the prayer meeting. And then we say, well, I'm on you and me, so we can pray, and God is here. He promised he would. But you know, that's a special thing. If two of us can get together and God is there, why have the rest of us stayed away? But there's something special when the community comes together. When you and I as Christians meet, it ought to be a little bit like Elizabeth and Mary. Mary comes in and Elizabeth begins to prophesy. I love it. Yesterday I was stepping across to bacon brew for a macchiato. Nice and close, I needed a macchiato. But I looked around, no one to go with me for a macchiato. I said, okay, I'll have a macchiato on my own. And I stepped across the street. Then just as I was about to enter, I looked over and I saw one of my friends. And I said, let's go have a macchiato together. We went in, we sat, we drank macchiato. We were going to be there. He was rushing for something. I was rushing for something. But we sat there for an hour. And we prayed. And we talked. And we laughed. And I knew today he was going to be in another church ministering somewhere. And I asked him, what are you sharing in church today or tomorrow? What are you going, what's your message going to be? And he shared with me what God had put on his heart. And then he said, David, what about you? And I said, we're going to talk about Mary. We're going to talk about Mary getting a visit from, from Gabriel. Well, I tell you what, we visited, we talked. It was hard to say goodbye because it was sweet Christian fellowship. We didn't prophesy in the sense that Elizabeth prophesied, but we prophesied because we both proclaimed the Word of God, and the Word of God is sweet. Whatever the context, it's really sweet when all of us are here together on a Sunday morning. But the Word of God is really sweet over a macchiato. Hey, <laughs> amen. Some are saying, yeah, it's even sweeter. The Word of God is sweet, and we encourage one another by our presence at special Christian fellowship. I was somewhere at one of these bazaars, and I am having a hard time. You know, I'm new in Addis. I'm having a hard time keeping up with all the bazaars. And they say, well, this one runs to this time, but there's another one over there. So if you leave this one by 1 o'clock, you can get over there, but you have to hurry because that one's closing at 4. And then in the morning, there's this one. And then there was a pastor asked me, he said, you know, we're having a bazaar on Sunday. Is that all right? I said, well, I said, you have to figure that out. I can't tell you. But there's this bazaar and that bazaar. But anyway, I was at this bazaar and I met a guy. We began to talk, complete stranger, never seen him before. But as we began to talk, I realized he was not just someone that I was meeting for the first time, but I was meeting my brother for the first time. Hmm. Different mother, different father, but still relatives <laughs> because we're both in Christ. And the fellowship was sweet, and I walked away from that bazaar. And yeah, I had a couple of things under my arms. But what was sweeter is I met my brother, who was leaving Ethiopia and going to another place. Elizabeth began to prophesy. Because the Spirit of God went with Mary, the Spirit of God was already on Elizabeth, and she began to prophesy. Hearts are cheered when God is honored, when there is good fellowship. If this event hadn't happened, Mary wouldn't have sung, Elizabeth would not have prophesied. But God uses the communion of the saints when we get together to work His grace. The scriptures say in the New Testament, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. And it's not about just filling seats, it's not about just filling this beautiful church, but it's about people coming together with an expectation and also a love for the communion of the body of Christ. There's refreshment. There's encouragement along the way. Sometimes someone to share a macchiato with. But there's a refreshment in God, in the Spirit. We get a refreshing by the Holy Spirit when we do share with one another and share the goodness of God. Elizabeth says, why am I so favored? Verse 43, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. And this was prophetic. 
that she knew that Mary was carrying Jesus the Messiah. But what does she declare in those few words that I am Elizabeth and I am God's servant? My Lord, I am a servant of the Most High. Elizabeth, God's servant. This child was the Messiah that was prophesied. Blessed are you, she says, that there's no jealousy, but just a gracious acceptance and a gracious blessing that she gives to Mary when she comes in there. Elizabeth prophesies, and Mary begins to sing. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he that is mighty has done great things, and holy is his name altogether. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he that is mighty has done great things, and holy is his name. One more time. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he that is mighty has done great things, and holy is his name. Singing scripture, repeating her song. But when you come together, does your soul magnify the Lord like Mary's? It was a song of praise, grateful. She expresses her appreciation, her adoration to God. It was a very similar song to Hannah's song in 1 Samuel chapter 2. A song grounded in scripture. A song of spiritual joy, deep, deep spiritual joy. Out of the abundance of her heart, she began to sing. Elizabeth prophesies, and Mary sings. Let us search the scriptures. Let us know the scriptures. Meditate meditate the scriptures. That it comes out in a song, just like Mary's. This very song I was singing it this morning... I have double doors on my place, and I close those doors so I wouldn't disturb the neighbors. I was singing it last night about 11 o'clock, and about 5 o'clock this morning I was singing it again. And on my way I was singing it, and then I thought, oh my goodness, I'm meeting people along the way. And so I stopped singing when I got close. Then I whistled. And (laughs) and as I passed by, then I began to sing again, just softly. I wasn't making a big commotion in the street. But then I thought some of you might be on your way to church and you might see me and then you'd be making a report to the elders. You know, he talks to himself when he's walking along. (laughs) And I knew there'd be a lot of prayer going up for me, so that wouldn't be a bad thing. But you know, my soul, like Mary's, was so full of the goodness of God. And I couldn't help myself. I just sang along. My soul does magnify the Lord. My spirit rejoices because he does done many great things, great things in my life. And I know some things that are still to come from Scripture, and I know some of the things that he's already done. But let our souls sing. We hear the humility in her song. And yes, she does mention herself, but immediately she goes, Why? Because he that is mighty has done great things. And holy is his name. She expresses that she is the humble servant of God. She's deeply aware that that she never would be worthy of that honor, but she takes it and she praises God with it. And then she's hopeful in her song because she talks about even generations to come will call me blessed. Why? Because the mighty one has done great things. 
Humble yourself. The scripture says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Some of us are working so hard to get the promotion, so hard to be lifted up. And God says, humble yourselves and I'll do the promoting. I will lift you up. The song comes from deep worship. Her soul glorifies. (laughs) My spirit rejoices for God. She has a joy of her salvation. The joy in her Savior. And yet it is her Savior that she's carrying. A thankful spirit always erupts in praise and worship of the Almighty. Look for God's blessing and the praise will follow. It's a song of praise, but it's also a song of declaration. Mary knows God's works and knows his promises, and she gives testimony to his mighty deeds, to the power of God. She remembers how God has delivered his people from Pharaoh, from the Canaanites, from the Philistines, and more and more and more. How he brought down rulers and he lifted up Joseph, lifted up Moses and Samuel and David and Esther and Daniel, because he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry. Call upon me and I will answer you, the scripture says. The rich and the satisfied, they go away empty because they're taken care of by themselves. But Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. He's strong to save. He's strong to defeat every enemy. Amen. Have you got some Philistines in your life? Some Canaanites? He is strong and ready to deliver. And that's what Mary sings. And she sings that song of declaration, a song of testimony of what God has done. And then in verses 54 and 55, she sings a song of faith. She has talked about what he has done, but then she sings about what he will do. We need to study the scriptures, read the scriptures, know the scriptures, and expect that God is going to do something according to his word. (coughs) A good friend of mine from Uganda, a pastor, was in Canada one time, and after one of the services he had visited, he said to me, he said, I just don't understand you people. I don't like it when people say, you people, lumping us all together. But I said, tell me more. What are you talking about? He said, you know, he said, I'm simple. I'm a Ugandan. I'm an African. And you know, we read the word of God and God says this, so we just believe it. And I thought, well, that sounds like the right way to do it. But he said, I come over here to Canada and I keep meeting people. Even there was a preacher I heard who dismissed that God said this, but he didn't really mean it. God says this in Scripture, but don't expect it. He's not going to do it for you. That was for a long time ago. Not for you today. And he said, I just don't know what. I think I better get on a plane and go back to Uganda where I can just preach God's word. And people say amen, and they expect that God's going to do it. When we come together, there needs to be an expectation. There needs to be a faith that this is what God says, and this is what God will do. What he has done, he will do it again. And that's what Mary is expressing in the Song of Faith 54 and 55. Mary knew the promises of old, which is now our Old Testament. And she said, blessed be God who remembers to be merciful. Amen. He remembers. There's only one thing God forgets, and that's your confessed sin. Amen. But he remembers to be merciful. But sometimes we forget he wants to be merciful. Sometimes we forget he wants to pour out his blessing. And so we come, maybe on a Sunday, maybe in the morning when we take our own time for prayer and for reading. And we don't really expect, we do it sometimes out of rote, but not really expecting to meet God. But Mary sings a song of faith. Song of the promises of God. He remembered Abraham. In you will all the nations of the earth be blessed. His promises are eternal. 
One promise was about to be fulfilled in the birth of her son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High. She had waited along with Israel. She had waited for that promise. And now it was about to be fulfilled, but now in her song she reminds God about some of the other promises. And she's looking for that blessing. Did you come this morning looking for a blessing? Did you come with an expectation? Or did you come with doubt and despair and disappointment and expecting you'll go away disappointed? If that's your expectation, I'm sorry, nothing I can do. Just like we've been singing, I can't worship for you. I can't get rid of your disappointment for you. I can't get rid of your hurt, but Jesus can. Mary, did you know that God, that Jesus was going to do, that your son was going to do all of these things? Let's expect God. Let's expect the Lord Jesus to work in our doubt and despair and disappointment. Where we're anxious, where we're sick, where we have a family member sick, let's call out to God. We need direction. We need comfort. We have many other needs And we need to come to this house with an expectation that, yes, it is a house of prayer. And in a few minutes, I'll invite you, if you'd like someone to pray with you. This is a house of prayer, and we should come with expectation, just like Mary, that God is going to do his work. Next time we get together, think about Elizabeth and Mary and get ready to prophesy and get ready to sing. Oh, the place went quiet. I said, get ready to sing. (laughs) God might just give you a song right there. Sing it. Share it. Speak God's word to someone else. Sing the song of faith. Sing the song, (coughs) excuse me, of God's love, of his forgiveness, of his salvation, of his peace and joy and freedom, the strength and blessing that he wants to bring to your life. Sing of his presence. But don't just sing of it. Expect his presence. How many times, and not here, but other places, as I'm greeting people as they're leaving, someone said, oh, what a great service. I met God. And then someone else who was in the same service and maybe was even sitting closer to the front, they go away saying, hmm, same old, same old. They taught us a new song, and they sang a song we always sing. And and I think, okay, you missed it. Because you didn't come expecting God. You came with your expectation of the song we'd sing, and the song that we wouldn't sing, and you had an expectation of what God would do and what God wouldn't do, and more on the side of what God wouldn't do. But someone else goes, they have been in God's presence. On your way to church, sing a song of faith. When you're meeting a brother or a sister, sing the song of faith of what God has done and what he's going to do. Let's lay hold of the promises of God by faith. Let's sing our songs of worship in faith. Let the weak say, I am strong. I remember one Sunday I was leading that back in Canada, (coughs) and a friend of mine didn't even invite anyone. He just came down the aisle and he came to the altar and he knelt and he worshiped and I could see the streams of tears coming down his face. I thought, yes, God is at work. After that service, he said, David, I came to service so weak. But we began to say, let the weak say, I am strong. And I realized that God wanted to help me and I'd been leaving him out of my problems this week. And I was solving everything on my own. And he said, suddenly the light went on that I need to declare in faith. I am strong. Hallelujah. Let's come with that expectation. Let's sing the songs of faith. Let's hold on to the promises. Worship God. Let us proclaim our praise of God, our Savior, who is mindful of us just as he was Mary. I remind him, remember what you did for Mary? Remember what you did for Israel? I'm also looking for your blessing. Let us sing the declaration, the, the, the testimony in appreciation for what he's done for others. And when we hear what he's done for one of us, let's give God glory and give him thanks. Let us sing the promise of God in faith for what he's going to do. Mary, did you know that this little baby boy 
would give its life freely for all mankind. Mary, did you know that he would rise again, conquering death and hell for all time? Mary, now we know that he came to love and to heal and to forgive. And now we know that we can face today and every mountain and every problem we can face tomorrow in confidence and in victory because we know Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. And we surrender ourselves and we say, how will it be? I am the Lord's servant. How will it be? And when we do that, we recognize that it's God who holds our future. You really don't know the next 10 minutes. You assume a lot, as I do. But he holds our future. And because he lives, not that he lived 2,000 years ago and walked this earth, but because he lives today, we can face anything. And Mary realized, I can face this because God is with me. Just as Mary declared in confidence that God will remember us in mercy forever, let's sing together in faith and triumph, in full assurance of his love and strength and presence, that life is worth living, that life is good, because Jesus lives. If he doesn't live in you, if you don't know him, I'd invite you to come down here at the end of the service, and let's talk, and let's pray, and I'd love to introduce you to Jesus Christ. And for the rest of us, I'm going to invite you to stand and let's sing. God sent his son through Mary. They called him Jesus. And he came to heal, to love, to forgive. He lived, he died. To buy what? To buy your pardon. Hallelujah. And buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lived. Let's stand together. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future. And life is worth the living because he lives.